Welcome, welcome everyone to Book Experiences with Saf. I am Safia, and what I do is that I read for you, I make presentations, and I invite the participants to discuss what it is that we're talking about. Hopefully this way you get to enjoy the book the way it should be experienced. Tonight I have with me Miguel, Jesse, Tammy, Alcinda, Chantel, Corey, and Rolando. And it is going to be a very interesting topic. This is our book tonight. It is Things I Wish I'd Known Before We Got Married. And so this is by Jerry Chapman, and he is the well-known author for Five Love Languages. And he has a slew of other books if you ever want to check them out. This gentleman writes well. I mean, I would tell you right now, get this book. Keep this book. It is hilarious. It is easy to read. And it really teaches you something. For me, there were things in there I had never heard before. And so I would be cracking up reading this thing, realizing, hey, this is serious. But this is also funny when you're not in the mix. So we are just going to go straight into our presentation and see what this is like. Before you marry a person, make them use a computer with a really slow internet to see who they really are. This is not a part of the book, but I had to plug this in. <laughs> Because that is hilarious. hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Yes. Really become different people. So I just had to put that there because it was too hilarious to, to pass up. All right. So when the tingles strike, this is the manner in which love is spoken about, as if it's some sort of jungle animal hunt. We're walking along, doing our normal duties, when all of a sudden we look across a room, a street, down a hall, and there he or she is, whammo, bam, we fall in love. There's nothing we can do about it. It is completely beyond our control. And these tingles motivate us. Ooh, these warm, bubbly, tingly feelings, they motivate us to ask someone on a first date. Now, sometimes we lose the tingles on the first date. I mean, if anybody goes on a dinner date and looks like the little girl <laughs> eating the spaghetti, yes, you may actually find your emotions shutting down. However, if it goes well, the more time spent together, the tinglier the feeling. Before long, thoughts are on each other night and day. Our thoughts are obsessive in nature. We see the desired one as the most wonderful, exciting person we've ever known and ever want to be with. And we want to be with them often. You see, tingles are real and important, but... So think of the warm, excited feelings, the chill bumps, the sense of acceptance and the excitement from a touch as the cherry on top of a sundae. You can't have a sundae with only the cherry. Research indicates that the average lifespan of the in love obsession is two years. For some, it's a bit longer or a bit less, but on average, it's two years. Then we come down off the emotional high and the aspects of life we earlier disregarded in our euphoria become important. Differences emerge and the person you first saw as perfect and perfect for you has changed. So we're going to take our first break and talk it over. These are two questions, and I want us to unmute ourselves 
and give ourselves an opportunity to answer. So on a scale of one to 10, how strongly do you feel or did you feel the tingles for the other person you are with or you were with? So if you are currently married, on a scale of one to 10, how strongly did those tingles feel for you towards your now spouse at that time? Um, I don't need to know what it's like now. We're not going to do that just at that time. And if you're dating um, or you're eyeing someone, but you haven't started dating, how strongly are those tingles? Any, anyone? Yes, me. I had no tingles. <laughs> we had zero ting. Well, I don't know. My, my husband probably had them, but I didn't. I started off not liking the dude at all, not in that way. He was just a good friend, and then it evolved into what it is now. I, I do not recall tingles at all. They, they weren't a thing. Wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, if I can add to that, uh -huh. I often joke, um, and I recall even at the wedding reception, joking about when Suzette and I first, well, try to connect and i made a joke about um there being zero chemistry and i said to people as a chemistry teacher i should know chemistry right <laughs> 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 so that and i and i often joke and say boy it was like trying to eat paper right initially <laughs> um yeah that was the initial exploration is <laughs> like you saw the person and thought okay but you tried to connect and realize it wasn't working and yeah. you we forgot about it and many months, maybe a whole year and a half passed again. And when we reconnected, Tingles was real. 10 out of 10, 11 out of 10. Wow. <laughs> okay, you're a chemistry teacher, not a math teacher, 11 out of 10. Got it. <laughs> so, so I would, I would, what I would say uh, it was a 10 for me. It was a 10 for you, Rolando? Uh huh. Yeah, we had our tingles, yeah. At first sight, or did it have to grow like these others? No, uh, it was a. I I guess uh, maybe it was maybe it was like a uh, nine out of ten, and then it went to a ten out of ten. Wow! Oh, wow, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> Miguel, quick question: What was the difference in that year and a half? Um, I think when we first met, I was in school. Mm. And so I think males are terrible at multitasking. We try to, we claim to, but we really cannot. So because I was in school, I was on scholarship. I had nine months to, to do a two-year program. Wow. So it was just about trying to get that out of the way. So though I tried to do extra chemistry, that advanced <laughs> chemistry I wasn't ready for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Miguel. All right, <laughs> let's look at the second question. And that is, to what degree have you explored more important issues of compatibility in the following areas? Intellectual dialogue, emotional control, social interests, spiritual unity, and common values. I mean, are these things that people really care to even figure out when they are all googly-eyed? Has anybody been that serious to take yeah. all of that information? Yeah, I was. I was that was only because that my my wasn't my first relationship, but she was a point in my life where I, I wasn't uh, I wasn't looking to play around. Or have you know just have fun? No, I, I was already serious that whoever I was cho whoever I was choosing to be my my mate was uh, was the person I wanted to, to be with for the rest of my life. I was already looking for that, so I was already we were already having intellectual dialogue. We were having emotion, you know, talking about emotional control or observing each other in those instances, mm -hmm. and then social interests in in terms of like family compatibility. Uh, things like that, uh, your family, how do we deal with family issues on each side of the spectrum? And 
uh, you know, so of course our spiritual walk, spiritual unity, because we're both faith and and common values, you know, all things that I'm looking for, all my internal checklists. You know? Okay. So. Awesome. Thank you. Anyone else wants to share before we move on? I'll say something. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Safia, who should go first? Go ahead, Sean. Ladies. Ladies. Um, I don't know if like this is the female perspective or if it's just me because you talked about personality types before and I'm very much like a mind person like I think you can kind of categorize people into like people who rule with their mind people who rule with their heart and people who rule like with their gut and I'm very much a mind person so even though I'm experienced at, you're you know at the beginning of meeting someone you have chemistry or whatever but like I can't not turn off my mind in that kind of moment. So even from like the very beginning of feeling chemistry with someone, I'm kind of already <laughs> like sussing out the situation analytically. Yeah. Right. I don't know if other women do that. Yes, or... absolutely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I didn't I didn't find my husband attractive until I found wisdom in him. <laughs> And I found out he was really funny and smart. So I'm a I'm a I'm a mind girl myself. Okay. Yeah. And now I think I and now I think he's really hot, like totally hot. <laughs> That's cute. And that is true. He does tell me that. <laughs> I can attest that this is not just for sure. This is real. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, I think, you know, we all have our checklist, um, you know, I've, and when I've done things like this, I've advised people to keep your list small because there's a difference between real versus ideal. So don't have a list of 10 things you're looking for. You know, it's like three to five things um, because the 10 thing is a fairy tale thing. You know, you won't get people having all 10 of the things on your checklist. So I had a check. Amen, I had a check. no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You have to decide, you know, what is real? What do you really, really want here? Yes. What are the three things that you will not compromise on? Mm, right. Um, because as time change, certain things will change. Certain physical attributes will change. That's right. You know, uh, but what do I want as a core? So, yeah, there was some initial head checking and so on of interest and spiritual unity and common values but really and truly um in the midst of the tingling it was hard to do a deep dive mm -hmm. completely and even even premarital counseling and all of the things that that, that are done we, we is, is is to me as you as, as you as you live out in marriage you kind of have to adjust but there had to have been hopefully a couple of core things that you didn't um, shift on. Mm -hmm. So even the issue of finances, I think before marriage wasn't an issue. Um, as you're married now, you realize, okay, boy, finances is a serious thing, you know? Especially come as on. you have the kids and the kids come along and, you know, <laughs> how do you still make time to get some things done for yourself? How much permission needs to be asked before you do something spontaneously? Mm -hmm. You know, I think my wife, maybe like most females, like to shop. <laughs> I was looking for, looking for a deal. I don't know any of you ladies except for Saf, but I know I think females like to shop whether it's a nice deal on a pair of shoes or a bag or, you know. I like guys. to shop for people. That's my weakness. Not yes, so much for myself. And I think my wife is, is the same thing too. She will shop for us all the while. And I'm always looking at it and saying, boy, you know, was this necessary? No. So I'm very pragmatic. <laughs> you know? But she will buy me things all the time. I could say, but you know, I'm okay with this. Yeah, I will use something until it can't be used anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Okay, but anyway, you. yeah. So initially, I had my checklist, just a few things. Yeah. But I think in recent times, um, we're kind of working out some other issues mm -hmm. that before I didn't quite do a deep dive on. Or we did it, but it really never sunk in because the tingles were real. Yeah. Yeah. The thing were real. Okay. Nice. Um, Corey, you unmuted yourself. 
uncommon values and, and spiritual was very big at the time. Um, but um, social uh, interest wasn't. When you look back, it was something could have been given more attention mm. after 24 years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> congrats, congrats. I have something to say, sir. Oh, Tammy, go ahead. After Tammy. Yes. <laughs> What's the name of the chemistry teacher here? Because yeah. he's, he's my guy. <laughs> <laughs> He's my guy. That's the, that is the exact advice my father gave to me and I made the decision to get married to Dwight. The exact thing. So he said, he, he put it in percentages. He's a math guy, not the chemistry guy. <laughs> and he said, look, you'll get this, if you can get 70% of what you want, go for it because um, the rest is fluff and the fairy tale thing. So I, I, I just made an assessment. I said, yes, okay, Dwight is the one. That's it. Wow. And I'm happy. I'm happy with that. That's the day I, I decided. You see, I didn't know that part of that story. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's cold, yeah. Wow. <laughs> Jesse, you unmuted yourself. Did you want to say something? Yes. Miguel said something about fairy tale. <laughs> that, that was like, oh my God, that's my word. <laughs> so, um, I, I actually do believe in fairy tale. I don't know if it's my age or I don't, it, it's since childhood I I feel like I am that kind of person like it's like I want to complete my fairy tale story and I want to be the uh, like the Cinderella the princess who says that oh yeah my prince charming has like arrived like whatever or, like on a white <laughs> horse or whatever it is but um I believe like if you have that fairy tale imagination and if you get the right person you can like fulfill your fairy tale dream and like i just hope and i pray like if a girl like dreams about a fairy tale like it, it should be fulfilled <laughs> i know many people yeah, don't it can dream. evolve into that i believe sorry it can evolve into that it can become that yes, yes. Exactly. yeah yes, and then you can i mean i think that's what i'm experiencing you know? yeah i think i think the interesting part of what Jesse is saying, you know, that we do grow up with these dreams and, and, and these ideas and visions of what um, a life should be with another person. And I really think that is coming from the place of it's supposed to look like Christ in the church. So if you put it in that perspective, that is a fairy tale. I yes. mean, to have anyone love you like that from a woman's point of view is going to be a fairy tale he is going to be considered a prince who is willing exactly. to slay the dragon and lay down his life for you risk everything yeah. you know just for you yep yep yeah and every yeah. man wants yeah. to be that hero too you understand so it's not a one-sided thing every man wants to be able to be seen as that strong and to be respected as that person who can who can do it but I think, Jesse, what Tammy is saying is that the thought of you can get there. I mean, if you think about the story of Cinderella, she goes to the ball, right? She, she yes. gets her beautiful gown. She dances with the prince. And at the strike of midnight, her back to reality. <laughs> ends. Yes. Her beautiful gown turns back to rags. You know, those wonderful horses turn to mice. The chariot <laughs> turns to a pumpkin. And yes. she is running through the door, not wanting to get caught. It's all about being willing to stick through that kind of midnight strike. That's right. That's the prescriptive because True. that story has a different like views because that's that's what I feel like when she goes she has her gown she dances that's like the wedding day and after the wedding when the S and when you guys are actually living together that's when the midnight strikes <laughs> and that's when you know oh, that's the real life so now this is the real story you you're gonna live in until you know so. That's how I relate to it. And I go like, if, if you put God in it and if you like, if you focus and you give your hundred percent in a relationship, then every day would be like a fairy tale story to you. Mm. Amen. Amen.
Wonderful. All right, let's continue. This has been really, really good. Thank you for so thanks for him for bringing up the fairy tale word. Otherwise, I wouldn't have said anything. All right, so we're gonna continue. Romantic love has two stages. In the first stage of romantic love, everyone thinks, "Ha, huh, this is easy." The first stage of romantic love, the couple does not have to, quote unquote, work on the relationship. They may expend great energy in doing things for each other, but they don't consider this as work. The word best used here is delight. They feel elated with the opportunity to do something meaningful for the other person. They want to make each other happy and they often do. Quite a number of people actually drop out of college and choose to get married because the one they love is moving and they want to remain together. If this euphoria were to last, say, 20 years, few of us would accomplish our educational and vocational potential. The second stage of romantic love is the intentional stage. You see, when we're uninformed, unprepared, and clueless, uh, coming off the emotional high can leave one disillusioned. There may be an internal panic replaying in the mind, I've married the wrong person. I've married the wrong person. Why? Most people believe if they married the right person, the initial feelings would not subside. This is where it becomes important learning about each other's primary love language. It would make the transition much easier. Keeping romantic love alive in marriages requires making a successful transition from stage one to stage two. So I'm going to now pick up the book and read one little section from page 29 about Gary. He's, he's expressing what happens between he and his wife in regards to their love language and how it looks in their everyday routine life. So he says, my wife's love language is acts of service. That's why I vacuum floors, wash dishes, and take out the garbage. It's a small price to pay to keep love alive. My love language is words of affirmation. That's why I never leave the house without hearing my wife give me a positive word. Without hesitation, I can say that the emotional depth of our love for each other is far deeper than in those early days when we were swept along by euphoric feelings. We're gonna talk again. Unmute yourselves. And we're going to look at these questions. What do you think is your primary love language and why? And the second one is, I'm not sure if you can see it as clearly as I can. If you are dating or married, what do you think is the primary love language of your partner? So what do you think is your primary love language and why? And what do you think is the love language of your significant other? Who's going? <laughs> I, I think my love language more, uh, my, my wife is definitely, uh, she's, she likes to, uh, she likes to write messages and she likes to write what she feels and she likes to express herself that way. And I think she likes that as well. I'm more of a, I like to express it, uh, you know, with touch, I like, that's how, that's how I've been, where we've always been that way in my family growing up, that's how we express love to each other, mm -hmm. you know, hugging each other, you know, holding each other, uh, so for me, I'm, I'm more of a, you know, physical I'm, touch, physical touch, uh, but I also, I do, I, I, I don't prime, that, that would be my primary, but if I had to go to a secondary, which I know the question is not asking that, that's okay, I, do, I try to do, uh, you know, actions as well, okay, I mix it in a little bit. Ah. <laughs> nice. Anyone else? Do you know what your primary love language is? Yes. 
definitely know what Jesse knows. knows her love. Go ahead, Jesse. Tell them. Yes. Physical. Physical touch. I Listen, love hugging. You just have to tap her head, rub her yes. shoulder, give her a, a hug. Listen, she is happy as that. can be. <laughs> I'm so upset because of this COVID-19. I can't hug anyone. I can't like... Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm so, so sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and for the person you're interested in, by any chance, do you know what his love language is? Have you figured that out? I don't know. It's very boring on the other side. I actually don't know. Like, I just feel like... Uh, like it's like uh it's like i have all the energy and from there it's like okay okay like whatever <laughs> so i and but i feel like uh that person is kind of an introvert mm. so yeah it's gonna be a something it's a while to, to get that out yeah okay, no problem i totally get that <laughs> can i get a refresher on what the five love languages sure. are i know like three of them okay but Acts of service, yes. physical touch, quality time, and words of affirmation. Okay. I've forgotten gifts, which is like the most simple one. <laughs> or not simple. It's valid. Mine is definitely acts of service. And I also think quality time, but acts of service is like when someone goes out of their way to do something for me, it makes me feel really like cared for. Like if someone goes out of their way to do something for me so like I visited my friend Nicole once and she drove like two and a half hours to come pick me up from the airport and like she brought me a little mug of hot chocolate and little snacks and it was just like that kind of thing like makes me feel so good yeah. so yeah like stuff like that Alcinda? well my <laughs> Well, it definitely acts of kindness. That's the key for me. You know, during my marriage, um, once my husband was certain things, you know, the world, you know, and, and he used to know that. So those are the things used to be so good. And for him, it was affirmation. He loves, you know, when it, you know, if he's just going through the door, even if he's not going out through the grill, you know, even to say, okay, honey, um, be careful how you step there or, you know, little stuff like that. So, you know, that's that. Wow. That's good. Yeah. If I can chime in, I think for me, yes. I don't know if there's a primary, but if I have to pick one, one, I would be, it would be affirmation possibly. Mm. Um, and close, close, close second, you know, like there is one A and one B. Yes. Um, it will be time. Quality time. Um, and I think why possibly, um, I think I grew up in a context with a single parent home. My mother was always busy. There wasn't a whole lot of time to affirm and say anything good. Everything was just, you know, because she's rushing, trying to provide for the children. So whenever you got a congratulatory message or something, it made you feel extra special mm. because you know that she's busy. And, you know, even if it's not often, so to me, that is why I think that the, the affirmation became important and even quality time because I think growing up, these were some things that I didn't get a whole lot of. So these things became important to me later on. Wow. For Suzette, uh, my wife, I think for her, it's two T's, touch and I guess time, uh, maybe touch more than anything else, um, being more important. And the touch necessarily isn't always romantic touch because, you know, for guys, touch has a different kind of meaning, <laughs> right? <laughs> and I have I to say that to her some certain time. I said, hey, I'm not, you know, <laughs> I said, I said, cuddling. I said, cuddling models the lines, you know, <laughs> guys. <laughs> I said, if you cut it, it models the line and then it, it leads to fuddling, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so I don't want her to just, because, you know, I'm touching and hugging fine and let go quickly. It has to be like a count. 
but you don't keep hugging and rubbing and rubbing. You know, guys struggle with that too. Yes. <laughs> Guys struggle, you know? Yeah, guys struggle. So, um, hug and let go. But so for her, though, she likes me to cuddle and to hug her. And once I'm hugging, she just expects that alone. But in a guy's mind, you know, there's a little one plus one, you know? Legal. <laughs> 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 <Anyway. laughs> like, oh. <laughs> yeah. Bye. Oh, thank you, Miguel. Um, Corey, did you want to say something? Yes, I believe mine would be affection. And um, I believe it's because I grew up with my grandmother. So I guess I was a bit spoiled. So I like that uh, affection that I used to get from her. And I would say my wife own is, what was that word I'm looking for? When you, when you speak, what it is? Uh, uh, Affirmation. Affirmation. I believe my wife wants affirmation. Okay. Awesome. Tammy, anything from you? Men have, uh, mine has changed over the years, I think, what's primary and mm -hmm. whatever not. Um, so it used to be physical touch. And now I believe it's words of affirmation. And also close behind that is or or next to it it's quality time quality time yeah huh. I, I find that I'm evolving things have they have seasons <laughs> i'm embracing that <laughs> yeah okay yeah for okay. dwight um i think it is acts of service dwight doesn't know him he doesn't know either so <laughs> so i'm not alone but i believe it is acts of service Okay. Wait a minute. Is that one? Let me make sure. Acts of service yes, is, is one, right? Okay. Yes, <laughs> All right. I think I think that's it. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> for me, mine has changed a a little bit. Um, but like, what happens is that when I took the test, I had um, almost two time for second place. And the first place was only two points off. So it, it's, it's like a triplet kind of thing. Um, so it changed from quality time to words of affirmation. And then words of affirmation kind of bumped down, not, not quality time bumped down and physical touch went up. So I thought that was interesting. Um, and then for me, um, in my dating relationship, I kind of just hit all five. <laughs> I'm like an all-rounder. <laughs> oh. <laughs> all words of affirmation, you're going to get gifts, you're going to get quality time, you're going to get everything. I'm just, I'm just going, I'm just spinning. I'm spinning. Um, so, Dwight wants to know if you're working with the seasons. <laughs> so when it's cold, if you it's want to touch. It's like, it's like <laughs> Scotland. You can get all four seasons in one day. I was okay, working ma'am. And I was tired. <laughs> I was working it and I was tired. You well. All right. So let's move on. Thank you, everybody. Personality types. So I'm going to ask Chantel. Let's start. If you can read this for me, please. Night Owl versus Early Bird and Half Full versus half empty personality types. Okay. Night owl versus early bird. A morning person will never become a night person and a night person will never become a morning person. <laughs> this difference can have a profound impact on the couple's sexual relationship. Half full versus half empty. The pessimist and the optimist are often attracted to each other. The optimist sees the possibilities and the pessimist sees the problems. This can affect how you manage money as a couple and take risks. Thank you. Miguel, may I ask you to read When the Dead Sea Weds a Babbling Brook? This area of difference is related to speech. When it comes to sharing, the Dead Sea goes nowhere. That personality has a large reservoir in which they store their experiences of the day and are happy not to talk. The babbling brook, however, 
can share in less than 60 seconds everything that comes in the air and the eye gates. The babbling brook tends to be a painter and the Dead Sea a pointer. These patterns of speech are not likely to change and can affect silence needed on one side and the sense of rejection on the other. Thank you. Wow. I know, right? <laughs> Rolando, can you please do neat mix versus slobs? Some oh, people do live. <laughs> Some people do live by the motto, a place for everything and everything has its place. Other people have no compulsion to put away their tools, clothes, used coffee mugs, or anything else. Negotiate early, face the reality, and discuss early who will be responsible for what. This can greatly affect <laughs> your sanity. Amen. Yep. <laughs> oh. Oh. Um, Tani, if you're Ooh. able, passives and aggressives. Lord. Before <laughs> marriage, these traits may the pursue, advance, a cause, believe to be right, and the thinking, analyzing, wondering what, what if my baby's acting up? <laughs> Take him up, please. Oh, gosh. And the wondering what if types seem compatible. One found the other reassuringly calm, while in return, the other was pleased to have someone make the plans and chart the course. After marriage, they find the traits divisive. The aggressive keeps on trying to push the passive type into action, <laughs> while the passive wants to wait for a possible <laughs> better opportunity. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, Alcinda. Professors and dancers. Interesting combo. <laughs> Okay, let's see. Some people are extremely logical in their reasoning. They progress through rational steps and reach what is to them a logical conclusion. This is the professor. <laughs> <laughs> the intuitive person is more like a dancer. They don't need logical reason for everything they do. They simply do things because they enjoy them. Professors oh, are initially <laughs> humorous <laughs> with the initiative wisdom and the dancer proud of the professor's logic after time one is slowly driven insane and the other can't continue with the obsessive reasoning wow <laughs> yes those are the personalities that profoundly influences our behavior. I will read the organizer and the free spirit. The organizer gives attention to details while the free spirit thinks that details will take care of themselves. Mm -hmm. This can make family planning quite difficult if both are remaining at odds. For example, the organizer will plan a trip out of town. At least three different websites are visited for the best airfare and will make sure the rental car has GPS, hotel reservation done weeks in advance. Similar attention to what they will eat, do, and have the right equipment, all of that is there. The free spirit is gonna wait until the night before the trip to announce, hey, why don't we go to the coast instead of the mountains? <laughs> yeah. Yep. These are some of the things that can profoundly affect a marriage. So, this is our last slide. You see, all couples seriously considering marriage should fill out a personality profile. There are a number of personality profiles available. Some divide people into four different temperaments. And there's actually a second profile called couple checkup. And this one will measure 20 different aspects of your relationship. There's a separate profile for those who are dating, those who are engaged, and those who are married. So this ends our presentation. Awesome. I hope that um, you had fun 
any questions, thoughts, things that went through your head, especially with the personal personality types, um, go ahead. Just unmute and, and let me know. First of all, that there was that section talking about how uh, when you know uh, when you first when you first going out with the person and it, and you think it's all easy, nothing about what I did was easy. For me, <laughs> I was always me trying to prove to my wife that I was the genuine article, that I was who I was portraying myself to be, that I wasn't being, you know, p uh, playing some other character until one day she discovers I'm not who I am. So mm. like. For her, she was very guarded. And but the thing is, that's what I wanted. I wanted something to fight for. In her mind, she wanted she wanted a man who would fight for fight for something, fight for her. But she didn't know I was fighting for her. She thought I, I was she thought I was under the impression that uh, you know, that I thought things were gonna just come to me easy. But she in no way, you know, she put up that wall and I had to fight hard to chip away at that wall. So that's all I'm saying. You say. won. <laughs> <laughs> we both won. <laughs> you slayed the dragon and you got the princess. <laughs> all right, Corey. Um, it was a similar situation. Um, I had to prove myself. And uh, it was, that was a great part of the excitement, proving yourself. <clears throat> I must say. That's good. All right, thank you. Anyone else? Yeah, a couple of things. I think the idea of proving yourself um, is good for males because, I mean, it's often said that men are hunters. We like to pursue. We like challenges. And I still say to my female students who I interact with, they need to make things difficult for poor guys. Mm -hmm. And the guys will say, sir, what are you telling them that for? <laughs> Do not reveal the secrets. Very good. <laughs> I, said, I, said, I said, guys like challenges. If every time you call, they call you, you're available, they get tired quickly. Sometimes you're not really busy, but just say, I will call you back. I'm doing something. You're doing something that you could put it aside in there, but no, let the guys pursue. We love that, right? We love the thrill of the pursuit. It gives us something to a challenge, a problem to solve. Yeah, we like, we like that. But I'm looking at the personality profiles and it's amazing, I guess, the extremes you have. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and I see it in my wife and I a whole lot, the, the, the professor and the dancer. Maybe it's my science background, so I'm very kind of logical, like to plan things out, <laughs> you know. Um, and she's very spontaneous. You know, it's one of the reasons in Jamaica, for example, I'm actually from Grenada, but living in, in um, Jamaica the last 11 years. And um, in Grenada, a beach was as little as five minutes away. Mm. You know, so people can go to beach before they go to work, after work, just random. But in Jamaica, in Kingston, where I am, the nearest good beach is an hour and a half. So to me, a beach is an adventure. I have to plan. And so it's like, you know, she wants to get up and just say, can we go to the beach? I said, no, <laughs> <laughs> nothing, nothing. Because <laughs> I, I have to figure out, okay, you know, it's okay. I want to have to drive, I want to have to get back. What are we doing for meals? Are we going to, you know, pack something to go with or get food along the, the way? For her, it's just, it's just beach and I just go and, you know, we will, we will figure it out. But for me... Miguel, I, Miguel you, yeah. have, you, have a, you, have a, you have somebody cheering you on here in the background who is not <laughs> a part of this meeting legally <laughs> and needs to go to the bathroom oh. <laughs> and shower. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, so it's amazing how those personality types are like on opposite ends of the poles. And they say opposites attract, you know. Um, it's a find out a way, because initially when you are dating, you're not put off by it so much. Right. But somehow when you are married, you make it become a problem. So it's a find a way still to find the interest in the diversity and the excitement somehow, you know. Um, we have to find ways afterwards to still make that, di that diversity become a point of compatibility rather than that which pulls us mm -hmm. apart or, you know, yeah. I completely agree. Mm -hmm. oh. Well, can I ask can a I question, ask like, question? like, in regards, not to make this existential or anything, but like, to people who have been married for a longer period of time, do you think people, people's personalities can change? I mean, like, 
have you experienced that in your marriage where I guess I just want to open up for discussion because like sometimes I think that my personality is more fluid than I think it is and then other times I don't so it's like how much can you predict who someone's gonna be in their 30s in their 40s in their 50s in their 60s in their 70s you know like is that something worth thinking about think so when because i think so because i i know a couple that they were one way where uh the 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 wife the the female in the relationship they she was very aggressive very uh very kind of narrow-minded in a way like you know she had her point and she wasn't going to break away from her point and eventually uh after they had their first kid and i'm not saying has that has nothing to do with having kids but i'm just saying <laughs> they've been they were together enough uh, uh, for enough time that they had a child and after that things did change she eventually she re she she became the type of person that began to listen more instead of being a wall now she was letting the husband letting her, her other half uh have a say like she started to talk to us as if you know i saw myself as a problem in the relationship in a way because i wasn't being cooperative so maybe, you know, she has a strong personality. So if you're a strong personality, your personality could change a little bit to actually help the relationship uh, grow. So yeah, like for better or worse, you can change yeah. for better or worse, but like, it'll change. Yeah, sure. Why not? You're not going to change. You're still going to be who you are, but you're the, that, that you're, because when you're in, when you're in a marriage, your relationship, you're not no longer the single person anymore. Now you're one person with the other person so hmm. that's how yeah. that's how i see it right i agree with um rolando here that there is growth and there is change i know for example um i think my wife is, used to always say that she wasn't a morning person and i and, and i was the morning person so in the early part of their marriage i used to get up and do breakfast every morning because she couldn't wake up right um as your life change, and you know, I'm also a student as well, so I'm struggling being a student and a husband and a teacher. Um, that sometimes, because I'm up late at nights, then she now gets up early. So before she wasn't a night person, an early morning person, but now she is. I wasn't a night a night person, but now I can do late nights. So I think sometimes as the marriage grows, we we change for the better, because we want to make this work for both of us so we compromise and we do things that ordinarily we wouldn't have done um because we were stubborn you know we wanted to be our own boss mm -hmm. and once you're in a mm -hmm. in a marriage it has to be placed for compromise without compromising your sense of who you are as a person you realize that this is for the good of the marriage so if i need to wake up a couple of times like when you have a, a young child you might not be a morning person but a young child is crying <laughs> somebody has to has to wake up you know, and if you know your wife was up before the night before late, then you then you undo it. So I think I think there is there is growth, and I don't think you need to worry, Chantal. You know, if I marry this person and he's that way now, you know what would he be like when he gets to age fifty or age sixty? You know, you will grow together. Hmm. It's to have enough, I think, common interest and, and communication. To, yeah, yeah. You want to be able to speak openly and honestly. Um, I knew a friend of mine, she said when she was dating her husband, she used to bake every weekend. And he thought when they got married, she would bake every weekend. <laughs> Once they got married, the baking stopped. You know? <laughs> <laughs> because, and, and the reason why it stopped, it was not an intentional thing. They had kids fairly often. So she just could not again, you know? But he said, boy, she caught me with this baking thing. She really <laughs> caught me good. <laughs> Because every weekend he went over and there was always something oh. fresh. And then he got married realizing, wow, that's not going to happen. Yeah, maybe twice a year, you know, but yeah. So people change, but he realized that his wife was his wife. There are certain things that are, that are really, really trivial. And we have to learn to look beyond those little things and say, all right, all right. What other benefits am I deriving? Are we getting from this, this relationship? rather than just about me and what I want. What can I also give? How can I meet a particular need? 
And we will find that if we try to meet some people's need and, and our wife's need or our spouse's need, inadvertently ours will get met as well. You know, if we're keen on serving rather than on what can I get. So I say mm. you find somebody, you're Prince Charming, <laughs> you're real, you're real charming. <laughs> and um, but he has to be interested in, in growing. Yeah, has to be interested in growing clearly. And um, you know, that's yeah. the problem. Like mm -hmm. that's my thought, not I mean, I tend to be a pessimist sometimes, but that's my thought almost in the opposite sense where I almost feel like I wouldn't be so worried about I don't know. Like, I guess, because even things like common interests or even someone's spiritual journey can change over their lives. So, um, you know, I almost wouldn't put too much stock in that. But at the same time, like, you know, if you're introverted, you're introverted. If you're extroverted, you're extroverted. Like, I have a friend of mine who is a newly married couple. And like, that one slide talked about how um, Paul is very introverted. And his wife is very extroverted in the sense where at the end of the day, Paul didn't want to talk about his day and his wife really wanted to talk about her day. And they went through that thing where like she kind of felt rejected because he wasn't talking to her, but he needed to not talk <laughs> like to, to process his day. So it's like, you know, Rolando said in the chat and Tammy said too that there's a difference between personality and I forget what else they said, but like, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, and even if I know what it is like, like I said for me, I'm a, I'm a teacher. So at the end of a day, I don't want to talk initially about my day. Mm -hmm. I want some space. But after I've had my space for an hour, hour and a half, I will then be willing to speak. So it's an understanding that I will share, just not right now. But I will mm -hmm. share. But give me an hour and a half just to, you know, think through my day somewhat and, and, to, and, to, and, and to process it. And once I've had that space, I then will give you a summary, right? But, but I know when I was younger, I was very shy, introverted, and I changed. Don't know mm. what caused that. When I tell mm. people I'm shy, they say, you are shy. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> sensing shyness. <laughs> right. But I used to be really, really shy. Really, really. So. I hear it being said that the personalities change. And I heard what you said, Miguel, about, you know, Suzette being willing to get up early now. Yeah. And you being willing to stay up late. Is that necessarily a change, a complete change within the person? Because no. the book is saying no. you don't change. Is it just no. an adjustment? You do it because you need to. You do it because... Yeah. Of you, of yes. Right now, but yes. it's like you love it. No, it's she doesn't. She doesn't. She doesn't. Up late doesn't. now, or it's just a compromise. Compromise. Is yes. That, that's what it is. A compromise. Oh, a compromise. Basically, when people have small issues exploding the marriage, is because there is no willingness to compromise. The night nice. owl only yep. wants to be a night owl. The early bird only wants to be an early bird. Yeah? Is, is that what I'm hearing? I used to eat, when I tell you hate, sitting at the table at 10 in the night when my husband came home to sit there and listen to him talk while he eats. <laughs> but I learned to do it for years. I, I, I learned to do it for years. You know, you, I just said, okay, he's going to come in now. And, and I'll just go sit at the table. Okay, <laughs> talk and eat and talk and eat. And it was something I love, but I just did it, you know, for peace, mm -hmm. you know? So it's true. You just have to learn to compromise. And, and as you grow and understand each other, this will happen. Yeah, so as a single person, you have to be careful of not mixing the words up that there's compromise, there's growth, uh, there's the, then there's the conversation of cover-up. Uh, some people are very good in covering up a personality, and when you get married, it, it comes out. But um, mm. so you have to be careful with the four of them. Um, so you look, you, you're talking about compromise and growth. Uh, change is a very ticklish word, 
and then you have to guard yourself from people who cover up. So, especially as a single person, those are the things you have to discuss and look at. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. The difference in change, growth, compromise, and cover up. Profound. One. Thank you, Corey. Yeah. Because it's very possible that um, a good liar could just cover it up, but hasn't um, grown, haven't grown. <clears throat> so you, you have to look at those four things very carefully. Because um, I remember when I was going to get married, a, 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 a woman told me, um, and this is somebody who was very seasoned and spiritual and everything. And I, I never forgot it. She said, uh, Corey, people don't change. Mm. So you have to make sure, look at growth and compromise. Um, if, if the person is willing to compromise, if the person is willing to grow. But um, if the person is a notorious liar, a notorious flirt, a notorious whatever, you got to be careful. You, gotta, you, know, you have to be very careful. Mm. <clears throat> or have some strong addiction that you're saying with time it's going to change or blah 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 so be very careful with the cover up I think from a if you take this from a faith based uh, consideration thinking that if people tap into faith a higher power, someone greater than themselves, we're told they can change. But How does that would change mean growth? That, that would change there mean growth. That would change mean growth. You can grow. So if you used to lie ten times a day, you may lie one time a week. <laughs> <laughs> so we 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 don't want to abuse the word change. We want to stick with growth. Um, so, so, so if you speak about faith based, faith based, you still want to use that word, the perfect man really meant the mature man. Mm. So when you speak about growth, you're speaking about, um, I like to come home late, but I'm going to do my best, uh, uh, to come home earlier. And as some people were saying earlier that, um, before they had kids, they used to sleep late or, or as a night person or a day person. But when they get kids, they had to adjust. So, you you know, and there are things that, you know, you can adjust. But before you get married, you have to make sure, is this particular thing that I have a problem with, could it be adjusted? I think also, like, when we were talking about faith-based change or growth or whatever, like, if you're someone that believes in miracles, maybe you're optimistic that a miracle can happen. But, like, I think what comes into it is the desire to change. So like, if you want your spouse to change, does your spouse want to change? And if your spouse wants to change, then maybe that faith-based thing is going to help him do something that they wouldn't be able to do on their own. But if they don't want to change, then that miracle is probably not going to happen. <laughs> you know, like you, yeah, that's what I think. So you have to, you get home late. And you're tired of your husband getting home late. But if your husband doesn't want to get home early, like <laughs> there's nothing you can do to make him put in the effort or tap into that greater power to help him. <laughs> How do you know all those things um, before you tie the knot? Right? You don't? I don't know. So I'm asking those who are married. <laughs> You can know so that when the midnight, midnight you don't know everything, there? and I am, I assume you're going with the person's character. That's right. But you're also going with what you have been presented with as their character. So, like, should there be a specific amount of time that you are observing this person, making sure that there are others? You're not just like all cuddly with each other only that you're blindsided and you can't see because others will see because they're not having tingles for them <laughs> yes 
<laughs> well, I don't know. For Let's me, I'm not having the tingles can see a little for bit. Me, I'm going to answer your question for, from my point of view. So sure. my point of view is, I know we talked about earlier, I, I made it seem like there was a checklist I was going by and there, there were certain things I was looking for, but those are the initial things you're looking for. Okay, she, it, does she have a sense of humor? All these little things. Those are little things. Now we're talking about the nitty gritty for me is for me, the, that what, what set it straight for me before I decided, okay, this is the person I want to spend my whole life with was how can we both communicate with each other? Am I going to be with someone who's going to be a good communicator who's going to be able to, uh, if, if we have an argument, and that's the thing, you won't, you're going to be in the relationship long enough that you're going to argue, and it's going to be an argument on anything. And now, how do you resolve the argument? Are you going to be able to, if you can, for me, I don't know if this is for everybody, but this was a standing point for me. If I could be with someone who can, uh, who can communicate well with me, and we can resolve an issue together, then I know that along the, along the way in our marriage, we have problems along the way and we can get through that, then I, we can get through anything. That, that to me was important because if I'm with someone who hides themselves and doesn't wanna, oh, I don't wanna talk to you, I'm, then they walk away, that's trouble for me because that's, that means I have to work three times as hard and I don't even know if I'm ever, and I'm not gonna try and change that person because then I'm wasting my time. Unless I don't see something in that person that tells me Oh, that person has a type of spirit in them that they're willing to listen to you and they're willing to shut down their personality for a little bit so that, you know, and humble themselves and, you know, in their, from their perspective, they're humbling themselves. But to me, it's like, oh, this person is willing to, to listen and talk it out. And if I could see, if I see that quality, that, that trumps every other quality, no matter what checklist I had. Cause like Miguel said, there, there is no checklist to get the perfect person. I, I mean, somewhat what he was saying but uh but that's what i'm trying to say anyway <laughs> anyone else yes. i mean yes i have something to say for sure mm -hmm. so before before um everything got so quote unquote dreamy with me and my husband i went through a very hard time to the extent that i thought he was my enemy and exactly not who i should have gotten married to like it's night and day now and that, that happened as a result of trauma that I, I had experienced, you know, because life happens. So we're going along, it's great. And then I got traumatized through um, giving birth and everything went whack. And I thought he was my enemy. Um, and so um, I, I needed help. I needed help and it, it wasn't going to come from within me and it wasn't going to come from another person. Absolutely not. And I had to call out for that higher power as was mentioned before. Um, I'm a believer. <clears throat> and um, I had a dream. So I wanted my husband to change. I thought he was the reason I had gotten traumatized in the first place. If he had been more assertive, if he had been, the, so everything was on him. And um, it, it's a long process. All of this happened over five years. So it's a lot of stuff that I can't pack into, you know, this meeting. So um, um, I had a dream. And in that dream, <laughs> I heard a voice say to me, get over your hangups. I'm like, what? My hangups? <laughs> <laughs> this dude has ruined me um, and my purpose is done and all of that and it was so I looked up hang-ups I was I was I must say it was offensive to me I was offended because you know it's suggesting that the issue is with me <laughs> right and I'm thinking he's supposed to be the guy protecting me how could he allow this to happen and da 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 and I looked up hang-ups and it, it was basically a block you know a block a mental block and so so it was clearly me and I had to I prayed that thing through and I got that help until I'm on the other side now and it's a totally different reality that I'm living out right now completely different I can say with God all things are possible wow amen yeah wonderful. thank you thank you for for sharing something so personal um, I'm sure that will, anything that's gonna help somebody <laughs> that 
that will definitely help me. I mean, um, some of the experiences that women go through when they're having birth, it can really affect them. And it's something that is not um, easily shared and communicated. And so people don't know and they don't know how to, pray, how to handle it when it happens because they don't even, they don't, they don't know the signs. So I really appreciate that, Tammy. Thank you. Wow. Anybody else like you're on fire, you need to say something. I mean, <laughs> this is just three chapters of the book. For the single ones amongst us, uh, Jesse and Chantal, meaning you were not yet married, right? I'm just going to leave that. It doesn't matter if you're dating. Uh, not yet married. Based on what you have heard, do you feel more scared about getting married? Or do you feel like, I think I, I can find a way to be more prepared to get married? Um, I can go first with that because I was thinking about your question earlier about like, how do you know if you're making the right decision with who you're marrying and like, just like I turned 30 this year and I feel like I'm at a place in my life that's so different from where I was five years ago that it's like, I know myself so much better than I did that I honestly like, it doesn't make me more worried. I feel like, and I guess I'm also the type of person to not worry about something until it's happening, like, but I think we're all, we all have our personalities and we all go through these phases in our lives and depending on who you are and where you are, it can really affect how you enter into a relationship. Like, let's say, you know, and that's not to say that mistakes can't be made at certain ages of your life, but like the way that Jesse might enter into a relationship you know she's younger she's ready for the fairy tale she's ready for the <laughs> the romance and the idealism because that's where she is in her life at that beginning of her life where the future looks bright and rosy and she's ready for things to happen whereas like let's say you're in your 50s or 60s maybe you were divorced and you're meeting someone new or whatever at that phase in your life you're just I don't know I guess you maybe approach it differently so I guess, I guess I feel more confident about it the more I get to know myself. And it's less about the other person and more about me and who I am and who, you know, who I want to be, who, like the problems I've overcome, the changes that I've gone through in my faith or whatever. And like, I do feel like every year I get to know myself a little bit more, like what my personality is. Um, and like going through relationships, they don't have to be romantic relationships, but you learn from every relationship that you have. So I don't know, I guess, no, it doesn't make me more worried, but, uh, <laughs> but that doesn't mean I don't think I can prepare. <laughs> but I think the only way I can prepare is to know myself because I can't do anything until I meet that person. <laughs> True. True. I think what I'm hearing is instead of focusing on marrying the right person, you're focusing on being, being the right person. Yeah. And like, um, I guess, yeah, because I think at the end of the day, like I come from a broken marriage, like my parents' marriage was very tumultuous and my mom is a very faithful woman and my dad was not. And like, you know, I just saw that there are some things that no matter how much you pray, no matter how much you improve yourself, like there's two people in the mix. And if one person isn't doing the work towards the marriage, it's almost like there's nothing you can do. So I think like, I don't want to go through my relationships thinking that, well, maybe it's a good thing and a bad thing to know that they're you can control what you can control and you can't control what you can't control. And like, I don't want fear to be any part of that decision-making process. So the best way I can avoid that, I guess, is to um, know who I am as a part of that relationship. I don't know. Awesome. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 I'm going to ask a question to the married people here 
and um, it's on the topic of sex. And this is something that surprised me when I read this book because I just, I just never knew it could have been a thing. And it's the whole thing about the night owl and the early bird. So it was very, very funny what um, Gary Chapman was, was uh, communicating in this book. You know, he and his wife are on two opposite spectrums. One is a night owl, one is an early bird. And so they came into their marriage with expectations of when was all this lovely sex going to happen? For the late night person, it was going to be late at night, you know, after everything got done and they could wash up and, and get ready. Well, for the early bird person, it was like after a night of rest, <laughs> you know. Then sometime early in the morning, you wake up and you get your groove on before you go to work. And they were having a difficult time. And I was totally caught off guard. I had no idea that something as simple as that can affect that part of the relationship. Anybody who is married wants to speak on that quickly? <laughs> Well, I'm the early bird and Dwight was <laughs> the the night owl. But that got quickly solved, resolved when um when we had children. Oh. So he was he just he just became really tired. So he would go to bed early and wake up early. So he became just like me, so we have no problems. <laughs> okay, yeah. thank you. But, but it wasn't an issue before. I don't, re I don't recall that. I need him here. I need him to, to chime in here. I, I don't think we had an issue. Uh, I'll get back to you on that one. <laughs> All right. Anybody else? You don't have to go into any nitty gritty, but if you can say yay or nay, you think that that's something to kind of get around. Right. I will say hey. Yeah. Um, so what it is, I think in the earliest in the early part of the marriage, no matter how tired you are, you are never too tired. <laughs> yeah? Okay. Uh, after you've been married for a Amen. while and you've had a child or two and you have work commitments and so on, um, you know, you, it, it then becomes a little easier to blame tiredness because, it's, because, because, because like you rightly said, you know, tingles persist. Um, and maybe, I, I know you said two years is the average, but I think for some people it goes beyond that, you know, five years. And so even if you are tired, I mean, you're really tired, but there's something about, 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 about youth where male and female, never too tired, <laughs> right? <laughs> but after a while, as the age begins to come along and the kids come along, you had a hard day at work, it's like, you know, I am too tired. And sometimes males don't understand too tired, you know? <laughs> we have to ask God to give males grace sometimes to understand if she says she's too tired, that she really might be too tired. But sometimes it's a kind of spontaneous thing. It just comes upon you. <laughs> and you suddenly feel, <laughs> and in my case, she would tell me sometimes, um, can I sleep first and wake? But when you sleep and wake, you know, the feeling might not be the same, at, you know? At this point in time, yeah, that's how I feel. But who knows? And, and so out of love over time, you say, all right, when you sleep and wake. Or she said to me, can you, can you wake me at four or wake me at five? But the truth is, in the earlier part of the marriage, I was selfish. I would wake her at four. <laughs> no, I said, no, come on. She's, she said she's tired. She's, she's, she's tired. Leave her alone. You know, we'll catch up in another day or two again at some other point in time. But in the early part, I think there's a selfish thing that you feel this way and you want this now, no matter how you feel. And of course, sometimes husband or wife will give in. Somebody said they're, they're tired, but for your partner's sake, you say, all right, go ahead, help yourself. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have any other stories. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to help you. You just, <laughs> you just go ahead. Right, right. right. I, oh, and I, uh, that's real. So thank you. Huh? Thank you for sharing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Alcinda? No, yes, no, no. What he said. I was just going to say, you do get a little help. You do get what? Sorry? He does get a little help. 
Yes, man. Yes, yes, yes. You still help. She still help him. It's an, yes. As you, you as you begin, you know, eventually incentives are provided to help. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my Abby, you're about to say something oh i was just saying what he said <laughs> what miguel said yeah that's that's right on all right so <laughs> this has been a long but good <laughs> discussion Thank you, everyone. Antonia, thank you for coming on. Jesse, I hope um, you were able to listen in on some of these juicy details that um, the rest of us as singles, we are grateful that you would share your stories and, um, and help us and help others. Um, I would say definitely if you want to check out the personality profile, couple what was that couple chart i'll put it in the description box but definitely um let's become the best selves we can be and be prepared for a fight side by side instead of face to face this has been another edition of book experiences with saf we want to thank you for joining us and we will see you next time Bye bye